You're about to watch Uno Moss, Charlie Kirk, the right winger on college campuses, taking on Hassan Piker from the Young Turks. They're doing it one more time at Politicon. So if you want to support the Young Turks, home of progressives, join today at tyt.com slash join. All right. Well, my name is Stephen Olikar. I'm the founder of Millennial Action Project. We're a nonpartisan organization working with young lawmakers across the country. And I'm honored to be here at Politicon for the fourth time. And I'm honored to be moderating this debate. Now, how many of you came to the debate between Charlie Kirk and Hassan Piker last year? OK. Now, out of everyone here, who's ready for round two? So this debate is going to be about whether young people should be progressives, conservatives, or perhaps something else. And we're going to hopefully come to some resolution at the end of this. So with that, I want you to give a huge Politicon round of applause, make some noise for Charlie Kirk of Turning Point USA and Hassan Piker of the Young Turks. Politicon. <laughs> like Twitter in real life. Yeah, exactly. I barely fit in this chair. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay. Did you guys have fun last year? I had fun. Did you yeah, have fun? No, it was year? a lot of fun, yeah. So clearly, uh, people were entertained because they wanted us back. And so here we are, and we're, we're going to discuss uh, young people in America, uh, especially given how this millennial demographic gets increasingly a major force in. American politics. And so what I want to start with is just some opening thoughts from both of our panelists here uh, on some of the major issues facing young people, and then we're going to dig deeper into some of those issues. Um, so I'll start with Charlie first. Uh, Charlie, tell us from your perspective what you see as some of the biggest issues facing young people today, and then as part of that, why you think young people should be conservatives. Well, I'd say the biggest issue facing our generation is there's been a bipartisan agreement to continue to spend money we don't have, grow government at the expense of our generation, concentrate power around Washington, D.C. to benefit the wealthy few and the well-connected. Um, and this, this shouldn't necessarily be a partisan issue, but it does, it becomes. Um, and as we conservatives believe, we believe the bigger the government, the smaller the citizen. As we send more money to Washington, D.C., the IRS gets more powerful, the government bureaucracies get more powerful, and our freedom decreases with that. As we've seen in the last 18 months, what happens when you start to cut taxes and deregulate the economy? The lowest ever black unemployment rate, the lowest ever Hispanic unemployment rate, the highest ever median income amongst the Hispanic community, economic confidence at an all-time high, 4.2% GDP rate, 3.7% unemployment rate. This economy is so great, Obama's trying to take credit for it. <laughs> and you can start to see the beginning stages of what happens when you embrace conservative principles and conservative ideas, juxtapose that with the last eight years, which was mediocrity and apologizing for being American. And it's great that we have a president that believes in the free market, free enterprise system, and I look forward to this discussion with Hassan as it's always lively and never, uh, never disappoints. <laughs> All right. So Hassan, you can respond to some of those points if you want to, but also tell us what you see as some of the big issues facing young people today and from your perspective, why you think young people should be progressive. I think I'm going to take an apolitical approach as well to this conversation because um, I like to look at issues and, and identify what they are and provide what kind of solutions I think are uh, the best possible ones. Currently, the economic system that we're living under is inherently exploitative, it's inherently oppressive, and we're now actually feeling the devastating impact of that more than ever. We live in a country where there are 40 million Americans, we live in the wealthiest nation that has ever existed, the wealthiest nation um, on the planet, and we have 40 million Americans living in poverty, we have 18.5 million Americans living in extreme poverty according to the latest UN reports. Uh, climate change is, is happening no matter how hard people try to deny its existence, and its, its, its outcomes are, are devastating, especially for millennials, and this is something that we need to focus on, and, I and unfortunately, 
every single time we tried to bring about any sort of socialized solutions to these problems that the free market obviously fails to, to provide solutions for, we get called socialist and that that idea is inherently damaging. We, believe, we live under an inherently oppressive capitalist dogma, and I'm here to talk about that because I think that at least questioning that and striving to find a better system is exactly what young people should be doing right now. Right. So, inherently oppressive. So, small business owners are oppressing their employees? Come on, you're, you're hyper-focusing on small business, dog. I'm talking about capitalism versus e socialism. Even though 85% of all jobs in this country are created by small businesses. <laughs> even though Why are you this trying president, to... poverty rates have gone to the lowest level in the last 65 years. Do you want to ask mil... Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. I let we... you finish, right? Okay, go ahead. Let me finish. 3.9 million Americans have gone off food stamps and into the labor force under this president. That should be applauded by everybody. When less people have to go to government for, their, for money and for meaning, and they instead are able to go to a job and have a paycheck, that's a good thing. And so the final thing I'll say is this, and you'll find disagreement. Just because someone gets rich does not mean someone gets poor. In order for you to get rich in a free market system, you must have a good idea. You must create value. You must employ people. You probably borrowed money. And you have an 80% chance of that business not succeeding. In a free market, yes, we applaud success, but you must take responsibility for failure. And you have seen in the last 100 years the standard of living increase for all people across the world. Things get better, prices go down, and we are able to enjoy the abundance that only a free market system can create. And you know what? I don't have to call you guys socialists. Bernie Sanders calls him himself a socialist. Yeah. And we should reject socialism. Yeah, no, we should. Yeah. It's very nice of you to immediately launch this accusation that I don't care for small businesses, or small businesses will never exist under a social democracy, kind of similar to small businesses in Nordic countries and with, with robust economies, but with also a powerful and, and protective social welfare programs and, 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 and socialized, uh, uh, socialized safety nets. Th this exists everywhere around the world, uh, all of the comparable Western democratic nations have been able to institute socialist principles, and that's precisely why their people are a lot happier. But then on top of that, on top of that, what's really important to me is like focusing on, uh, focusing on the rate of growth and the GDP is great, but you can't answer me, you can't answer this one simple question. Who cares what our GDP is if the person who is dying of abject poverty it, it, it is, it can't heal himself? In a, you know, because we don't have a socialized medicine, for example. So if you want to talk about healthcare solutions, happy to talk about it. You brought up Norway, Sweden, Finland. You would call those socialist countries. No, I wouldn't call them socialist countries, okay, but they're definitely on a scale. Yeah, I said okay, they're social so democracies, which would be a more socialist so, country. Okay, Look, if we're going to have this conversation, I, let's I asked it. a very simple question. No, we'll have a consensus on this first. Let so, me ask you a question, okay? Because this is like really in, in improper framing, and a lot of people confuse socialism. You said inherently communism. exploitative. You, you frame the argument. Oh, with capitalism, yeah, I oh, did. Okay, so that's yeah, and I rebutted that. So uh, how did you rebut that? By by talking about just because no, gets by rich talking about like what small businesses. It doesn't something. matter. Every single business but, Hassan, still. Let me is, let me say one thing. Every single Norway, business. Sweden, and Finland, according to the World Economic Freedom Index, are ranked higher than the United States of America. That is not socialist. They have they have less tax. They have lower taxes. So that means that you can have socialism and yet still have successful businesses no, in your country. Thank you for proving my point for me. No, it's I love this. It's the exact opposite. You know what socialist is? Bernie Sanders wants an 80 percent tax rate on yeah, the rich. Yeah, Venezuela too, right? Dude, listen, no, listen. Bernie Sanders you won't wants to keep our fossil fuel assets you want, in the world. You want me to explain in, it to you? Because you obviously don't understand it. Do you want me to explain Wait, it to you? Is Cuba not socialist? Is North Korea not socialist? Was Vietnam not socialist? Was, was Zimbabwe not socialist? You can laugh all you want, Hassan, okay, do you but want 100 million people died under socialism in the last 100 years, and you have the gumption to continue. Okay, okay, okay. You can keep laughing Hold on. to the victims' families from Cuba, from yeah. Venezuela, yeah. from Korea, from Vietnam, from Mao's China, from Stalin's Russia. The number one killer of citizens from innocent civilians in the last 100 years has been the very idea that you shamelessly wear on your sleeve every single day. <sighs> Marxism has killed more people than any other ideology over the last 100 years. Okay. Thank you for those words. You're welcome. Um, when 100 million people die under a communist dictatorship, and some of those millions are also Nazis, which is included there, whatever, you blame communism. The National Socialist or Workers blame, Party. Or you blame, you blame socialism. 
But when 7 million people die every year under our current global capitalist environment, where uh, just, just by famine alone, before we even talk about imperialism and before we even talk about the damaging wars that are happening all around the world, then it's the individual. So you're essentially telling every single person that's poor, it's your fault that you're poor, it's your fault that you die under a capitalist system, but if you were under a communist system... I have system, never said that. I mean, that's literally what you're saying. No, it's not. I'm so saying whose that fault is it? Whose fault is it that 7 million people every year die just by famine-related diseases so, so, and famine who, in our, under our current global capitalist structure? Wh whose individual fault is it? Yeah. Why is it with over, the system when the it comes to communism, but it's years, actually, but it's actually... Oh, go from 40 years right. to 80 years in America for uh -huh. women and 76 years Answer, for women. You're not answering Global my question. Global poverty is at its all-time low than it ever has been. But you're not answering. below 10 percent. You're not answering my enterprise. question. You're not answering. You're, you're there, talking there about something There is not a singular different. person why individuals might die, unfortunately. However, what's going to stop oh, that? Oh, it's unfortunate when they die. Oh, oh yes, okay. yes, Hassan. Death yeah. is unfortunate. Yeah, Correct. I know. I understand. But you H how do you seem solve as though they problems? are just a statistic. So, how do you solve so let's talk about health care in particular. Okay. Because, because a common critique of conservatives is that we do not have a plan for health care. It's quite simple. First of all, the idea that we do not have socialized medicine or a test case for it in the States is incorrect. The Veterans Administration. Did you see the veterans? Oh, God. $180 oh, that's terrible. billion dollars a oh, year how we spend trying how to help disgusting. our veterans. Hassan, let me finish. $180 billion a year we spend trying to help our veterans, and they wait in line. They die in the clinics. The quality care is unbelievably low. You cannot say that the Veterans Administration is a well-run government agency, despite us spending $180 billion a year trying to help our vets. We how have seen disgusting what's that disgusting? you would... you would send these young men and women overseas to Me? go fight imperial not you i'm, I'm talking about conservatives in you. general just conservatives in general don't mind sending these young men and women overseas to fight imperialist conquests that have nothing to do with protecting america or I'm protecting american sovereignty hold on that's great that's great that's just one war though we're waging many currently but then they come back and the numbers have obviously increased uh, it, it, the number of casualties have increased. The, the, the treatment is drastically different than a regular pool of American citizens who aren't in the line of fire. How could you then turn around, not fund that system that we promised those veterans we would take care of them, not fund that system, and then use it as a talking point to say socialized medicine does we, not work? We, we that should, is disgusting. We should take that care of our vets. disgusting. You know what's disgusting, Hassan? The fact that you defend that system. The fact that vets die waiting for care. Our yeah. vets are our heroes. First of all, I'm against the Afghanistan oh, yeah. war, against the Iraq war, against like, our funding of Saudi Arabia's illegal war in Yemen. I'm against the missile strikes in Syria. So don't try to paint me in the same blend and the same brush that all neoconservatives no, are. Second really of all, ironically, Donald Trump is making the world a safer place. The Korean War is ending thanks to Donald Trump. ISIS is on the run and being destroyed. What does, this have, to, what does this have to do with well, our, us lying to our veterans that we were going to take care of them and then letting the Veterans them be Administration, the which street, is socialized dog. medicine. The Veterans Administration, which is socialized medicine, does a disservice. You advocate for socialized medicine. I do not want the rest of the country. I'm not saying to be the VA is good. I'm saying that it's underfunded. That our veterans have. To You're using that as a as a tool to just attack socialism. No, a attack piece socialized of evidence. Medicine. It's when called evidence. This works on. in every in every other country that has tried to do this. This works. This system absolutely Cuba? works. How does the, the Cuba? How does the Cuban the healthcare system work? The Cuban health Cuban healthcare system. The Cuban healthcare system? Oh, you mean the country where they're on the verge of solving AIDS and and and, and a multitude of different cancer research? Like, what are you talking about? Where, where their, life ex, their life expectancy is 15 years okay, it, but, less than the United States, you're, where they have widespread starvation, where they lock like up political dissidents. Okay. Why do people flee to Havana, Cuba for Miami, Florida? I don't know. They don't maybe flee our sanctions Miami, have Florida something to do with it? For Havana, it? Cuba. Okay, maybe it's, because, seven here. maybe it's because people did not want to willingly give away their land. But I'm not here defending Cuba. I don't give a shit about Cuba, dog. I'm talking about America. No, you just, and I'm you talking just said about they're solving nations. AIDS, which is I'm talking about comparable false. nations. We are talking about socialized medicine in comparable nations. Are you going to say that America and Cuba are virtually identical? I would happen to, I would happen to, I think that Canada is a better example, and there are definitely problems within the Canadian healthcare system, again, due to privatization and due to underfunding. The, 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 and, and crippling the institution from within because of private, uh, privatized uh, policies. This is all, private enterprise is, is grossly responsible for, for 
the, the lack of affordable health care in this country. It shouldn't even be affordable. It should be free. This is what the people want. Nothing Charlie. is free, Hassan. 82 percent of Americans, 82 percent of free Americans if your neighbor want is paying for Medicare it. for all. 52 percent of Republicans want Medicare for all. The only people at this point, the only people who are standing firmly against Medicare for all are just essentially Me? saying, look, I don't care. I love corporate lobbyists. I think big pharma should, should continue to increase their profits. And it doesn't matter if you can't live a dignified life without the crippling fear that if you lose your job, you might lose your health care oh. and you might literally die. And if you can't fund your, fund your medicine, if you can't fund your health care, then you should beg on the internet through crowdsourcing. Okay. Again, Candace Hassan, Owens you, you are virtue was, signaling constantly because you, you are implying that just because signaling? I have a different policy perspective, that I care less about these people. I mean, the free market I said, system. If you're against whenever it, it, that's what you want. So in you every want single sector and vertical, allow me to finish. Okay, you want private housing, more. You whether it be in food, it? whether it be in anywhere the free market is allowed to interact, which we do not have a free market system in healthcare right now. You cannot buy health insurance across state lines. We have a national quota for doctors. We have the FDA that disallows entrepreneurs to compete against big pharma by having patents for 30 years so that people with great ideas. Do you think FDA regulation is bad when it comes to medicine? There are certain well, elements of regulation well, that is allow bad. Me to finish but I want you to be very specific. No, you can't just which throw one? eight How about a th points. Uh, let me finish. How about a 30-year patent on a okay. drug that disallows someone with a better idea that would bring down the price of the drug so that the middle class could have the same sort of treatment that the rich and powerful have? That's, that's, used that's the regulation that you think I'm against? No, I'm not I, saying I'm, you're I'm against it. I'm saying what I'm it for, in a Hassan. Public I way. No, I think that. we should. Look. Again, let, let me finish. All right, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. You're right. The free market allows itself to three really, really big things. It allows prices to go down, quality to go up, and abundance to go outward. Everywhere it's tried, whether it be grocery stores, whether it be housing, if, if, if the, the laws of the market do not stop working just because it's in healthcare. Whether it be LASIK eye surgery, LASIK eye surgery used to cost $20,000 per eye. You, the insurance companies yeah, technological are, advancements be, that are because inevitable. Because of the free market, more affordable. the insurance companies no, would dude. not cover the LASIK no, eye this surgery. Is ridiculous. It was a cash business. Doctors went outside of the traditional system, and all of a sudden now it costs $500 per eye for LASIK eye surgery. Everything you're saying a, is flat out false. And also, what's false about because that? Because we live in a, we live under a mixed economy, Charlie. So it's a consequence of both publicly funded research and also certain private elements. So when you try to turn around and look at technological advancements that are happening in e virtually every field. Okay, virtually every field on an international scale, and assume that this is just a consequence of free market capitalism. Well, let's talk. Yeah, no, it's actually unicorns, dude. Unicorns are well, are, are so giving Hassan, us magically the. Hassan, ask me a question. If we're gonna lie does, about this stuff, does, then do, we might as well do, just go no, all the way question. out. Do, do, does insurance cover LASIK? Does insurance, does cover, insurance LASIK? cover LASIK? What does that have to do with anything? Because when you don't have the insurance lobby within the negotiating of prices, then the consumer knows exactly what everything costs. Are you gonna, the are the you reason really why health care costs so much in really this country, the that the you go into a hospital, no one better? knows what anything costs. No one knows what anything costs for how long you stay there, for how long the procedure is. A key component of a market is pricing. Yeah. The problem with the yeah. system we and have And we now, live in a country that is virtually the only country system. on the planet that does not negotiate drug prices. Even Donald Trump said he was going to do this, and, he, and he's failed to deliver on that promise, among yeah. many other promises, right. like he was going to solve the economy or that he was going to uh, bring about world peace. Like, this is preposterous to assume that, like, insurance, in, you could just unjustifiably just throw out a claim without me, without expecting me to, uh, re, re, oh, I can't even talk, holy shit, refute it when you say, uh, when you make this ridiculous assertion that insurance companies are actually decreasing prices when it's not the no, government no, they're who not. should be it's regulating the, Hassan, them. I asked a very specific question. What? LASIK eye surgery then you not covered by insurance. Okay. Consumers went straight to the doctor, so they knew how much it cost. Therefore, prices went down, quality went up, and accessibility went outward. That's so what happens when a market is other... allowed to exist. So, so why imagine... is it virtually every other? Uh, because I look, I don't know the ins and outs of the uh, the complicated LASIK surgery, and I'm I'm willing to bet that you don't either. You just know a talking point about it, but it doesn't matter. Look, um, look. But None can, of this matters but, but, but because you are say, hyper focusing you on LASIK surgery. Are all Americans? Is this the most important problem that all Americans have to face when it However, comes to our current obesity I'm really rate? Glad you asked. When it comes to the cancer rate in the U.S., Hassan. which is good, we're good on cancer if you can afford it. So how do you get things to cost less? Competition, which is inherent in a free market. Regulation. Regulation Absolutely. raises prices. Regulation Absolutely. prices out middle class consumers. Regulation is a tool used by corporations to go go after small business owners. That is why the biggest small, corporation. Oh, the small business owner like Pfizer. You're right, dude. Come on. Pfizer dude. has You're being a $100 million a year government lobbying 
budget. That yeah, is not I hate right. that. We agree that on is that. Corporatism. Yeah, that is not capitalism. It's different when you have a good idea versus buying lobbyists, sending them to D.C., saying put all these rules and regulations that I can afford, but the entrepreneur from Silicon Valley that has a five-person company cannot afford. So $20 why is it cheaper in, in other countries, Charlie? Explain that to me. If it's not government price negotiations, why is it cheaper in virtually every other country? As a matter of fact, this is a ridiculous talking point because, like conservatives, have, for the most part, maybe not Charlie, but I, I am willing to hear your perspective on this. Conservatives, for the most part, have like completely uh, decided that the whole regulation conversation is ridiculous and have gone so far as to say that we are subsidizing health care for the rest of the world because we, ha we are the most innovative nation when it comes to medicine. It's, re it's preposterous. Every other nation is able to do this and, and, and these companies are still selling to them. Obviously, they're not selling out of the goodness of their heart because there's no such thing. It's all profit motive, right? So, it's cap they're capable of lowering drug prices here in the United States as well. But the only reason why they won't, and you're correct on this, I will, I will tell you, because obviously I'm very anti-lobby uh, here and anti-corporatist and anti-capitalist as well, which by the way, lobbying is inherently a capitalist structure. You constantly Corporatist. talk about how money is- Corporatist. Free. What? difference okay corporatist and capitalist like you can't you, the two go hand in hand those huh? are not the same thing that's like saying i'm crony capitalism is just unfettered capitalism and you are constantly on the one hand arguing again against regulation and then on the other hand saying well it's not true capitalism okay. which one is it okay, should so we regulate capitalism so it doesn't turn into crony so capitalism? I, I think we should massively should we deregulate re the american economy i'm not saying to abolish every single piece of regulation uh -huh. but when what regulations specifically let me finish what except for like the patent one what, which i'm on board with what, as well. what regulation specifically how about dodd frank that'd be a great start that disallows community banks from competing against Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan Chase. The big banks wrote Dodd-Frank. That is why we've seen an 80% decrease in community banks over the last eight years since the passage of Dodd-Frank, because it makes it nearly impossible for community banks to be able to compete against the Wall Street banks. I will say this, What though. Charlie Let fails me, to mention Hassan, with Dodd-Frank is like I did not the interrupt leading, you. No, what Charlie on. fails to mention with Dodd-Frank, and you can't say this and, and, not, and not mention this part, there are plenty of fail-safes within Dodd-Frank, which was imperfect, I will admit. There yes. are plenty of fail-safes that were also taken away. For example, the fiduciary responsibility. So if you're an old person and you go up to a bank, that your, your banker can uh, virtually make any sort of risky financial decision they want to now because they took that away so that the bankers could make more money off of your money that they're playing around with. This is the kind of deregulation that already caused the 2008 housing All right, I, I'm not going to get and into no, oh, you're not going to and Freddie rating agencies. I know what the fuck Federal you're Reserve, about? Federal Reserve lowering. Oh, whatever. The, Federal dude. Reserve lowering interest rates. Hold on. What's Fannie and Freddie? Genius. What's Fannie and Freddie? Tell me what that is. Tell me about the rating agencies. Okay. Tell me about how we should have allowed Wells Fargo to pay a price, and those people should be in prison right now for doing what they did. I agree. And lying to federal regulators. Charlie and it was, sounds like and it a was communist a Democrat to me. Congress and a Democrat Senate advocating and a Democrat the, president. Advocating the jail not, bankers. I mean, Hassan, I'm on board, dog. Hassan, Let's we do it right now. Talking over each other for the next 45 minutes, or you can let me finish. The final thing I'll, I'll say on, on banking regulation, the, the, one of the biggest misrepresentations of reality is somehow that free market capitalism contributed to the, the, the 2008 financial crisis. It was the rating agencies in bed with Fannie and Freddie Mac doing AAA bond rating with B and B minus rated bonds. No one looked what they were actually rating. It was the government institutions that were telling Wall Street to continue to go after subprime mortgage lending where they did credit default swaps on top of it leveraging the entire american economy with alan greenspan artificially lowering interest rates after 9 11 playing with cheap money pair that with the community reinvestment act yeah. and no one actually knowing what yeah, they're no, trading i don't like liberal all paper, certified we're on the same page. by washington we're on the same page but you sound a lot like a communist when you make those points i'm just going to let you know when you're like let's jail but bankers so, so let's what, regulate the let's regulate uh both our both our politicians and also these corporations you well, can't so, just sit so here here's and the say broader that it's question is, you keep mentioning the failures of capitalism and then your solution to the failures of capitalism I've is not, i've mentioned more capitalism more free market failure of state Statism. Well, you know how about the failure? How about the successes of free market capitalism? The fact that we have abundance in light, air conditioning. The fact that we have more food that we throw away every single year than we actually eat. The fact Wait, that in exactly. the Western you world, think that's a good thing. You think that our waste is a good thing, dude? We, we have an abundance problem yeah. in the West, we not a scarcity abundance. problem. Yeah. In Venezuela, the average Venezuelan Aha. has lost 17 yes. pounds. Oh yes, 4,000 percent inflation. Yes. yes. Brink on the Civil War. Venezuela, yes. the oil only socialist in the world. They country don't have a on the planet, economy. everybody. Yes. The fact they have 42 percent unemployment. Yes. The fact that Maduro continues to exploit his citizens around the lies of Karl Marx. Yes, is that what we're talking about, Hassan? Yes. I love that you think you owned. Oh, my God.
First of all, can I, can I, I just stop no, you guys? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, okay. you can't just let him. Okay, the, all right. Let, you I'll can't just let him word. throw away no, the Republican Despacito, which is every single time the dirty S word is mentioned, it's like, oh, Venezuela. Dude. All right, I'll give you a bar. I get it. You, you, you can't. No, no, no. You got to let me yeah, talk. No, let you you got to let me yeah. talk. You, you, did your, you did your dance and you said Venezuela. You got it out. And I'm Pretty glad good, right? you did. I'm glad you did. It's the ultimate defense. Like I said, Venezuela has virtually the same exact, Venezuela has socialized its extraction industries, which is why it is extremely comparable to a Nordic country like Norway. If socialism successfully is implemented, or at least social democracies are successfully implemented in countries like Norway, then some countries fail because they're corrupt or because of currency mismanagement or because of a variety of different reasons like the IMF or, or American sanctions or even backing military coups in the country, which Donald Trump apparently, the world uh, leader in peace, is, is toying around with as if that has worked ever in Latin American countries or anywhere worldwide. Like, there are a multitude of different reasons why socialism or, or a, a, a more robust social state has not worked in Venezuela, but it obviously has been successful in other countries. Like but Zimbabwe, you, but you Cuba, Vietnam, like that, as though, as North though Korea, the only reason. Let me, former let Bulgaria, me former Belarus, Charlie, you're not East letting Germany, me Soviet Union. Those were great test cases Charlie, for socialism, I, yeah, right? I'm glad that you know countries. I'm glad that you are demonstrating that despite our public education system, you are still knowledgeable on different countries. Stop naming countries and let me finish, okay? All right. <laughs> like, so ridiculous, dude. At this point, you guys all have to be aware that this is a ridiculous notion, right? There are plenty of socialized countries around the planet. It's not just Venezuela. And also, let me tell you another thing, okay? When Nordic countries want to implement social democracies or socially democratic principles, it doesn't matter because the United States can't impose sanctions on them, and the United States, the United States can't go and bomb them. The United States can't implement coups in their countries. And Look at that, it freaking works, dude. It works, maybe we should stop meddling in foreign affairs all around the world and allow these countries to do whatever they want. Because you can I, I, virtue I, I, signal as I, much I, I as you I generally agree with a non-interventionist. Yeah, you, yeah. you can talk about virtue signaling. Here's what's virtue signaling. Acting like you care about Venezuela. Acting like you care about the interest no, of I, Venezuela. I do care citizens. about Venezuela. Yeah, if you did, you wouldn't be in support of an administration that is trying to put sanctions on Venezuela, a country that is already crippled. Like, it, it's a corrupt government. I'm sure there's an authoritarian element to it. I'm not the biggest fan of Maduro either. But you can't sit here and be like, oh, Venezuela, Good. Venezuela, just to talk about socialism when your fellow men and women, your fellow brothers and sisters are dying in this country and you want to stop socialized medicine from happening here. All right. So, so again, I again, so you're, you're, you're drawing a connection with empathy and with my, my policy prescription to help people. And I would say because that the free market principles have never worked in socialized medicine. Obviously, that's the reason why we're here. Like that's the reason why that's so, the reason so why it's four me, times. Let, can you explain to me though that, that why that why people did everything they could to flee East Germany to go to West Germany? People flee Atlanta, <laughs> Cuba, from Miami, Florida, or they yeah. flee Venezuela for free market system. Why are they, they coming flew, to America? They, yeah, they fled, everyone. Yeah. Every immigrant's like, I'm coming to America for the free market system. Maybe the ones no, that uh, you uh, found. Like, well, what are they're you also about? fleeing. They're leaving they're, they're fleeing violence the communist that we dictatorships. Caused. They're leaving violence that we uh, largely were responsible okay, for, yeah, so, like the Honduran okay, caravan, so, for example. Let, let me ask you a question. We Who is somehow, implementing coups in these countries, hold on a Charlie? Second, son, Who is son, funding right-wing paramilitary groups just because they're so, capitalist and they love the second. free market? So, so tell me, since, since you're, that, that's your general thesis, that the reason communism and socialism hasn't worked because of U.S. intervention, what U.S. intervention in Zimbabwe or what U.S. intervention... <sighs> So the distinction between it's South not the Korea, only reason. South I'm Korea, not a North dummy. Korea. I don't think there's a singular reason for an entire country to absolutely fail. Like it's, it's no, ridiculous no, let me ask to you a question, that it's because South socialism. Korea You're the only one who's saying today that. because of U.S. intervention. North Korea lives in darkness. It's not suffering. just because of U.S. And intervention, Charlie. Of there are socialism. a multitude of reasons. Yes, obviously, the fact that socialism is evil, it doesn't work. It has proper incentive, <laughs> misproper incentives. All of your all of your reasons are just socialism is bad. Like you're literally like, no, it's socialism. Well, no, it also that free market capitalism is most proven. Country. Moral and effective economic system ever discovered dude, that's lifted more people out of poverty. That Western <laughs> civilization is one of the greatest experiments in human history. Dude, that you, the life expectancy has gone nearly double in the last 100 you years. You realize that you global keep poverty your same has talking points, right? Well, like I understand that it, it, I understand the technological it mean it's any advancements less true just are inevitable. I it. Repetition is the soul of memory, and I hope you can remember some of this yes. stuff so you can stop being a Marxist. Yes, <laughs> I understand. I understand that across the board due to exponential growth and also due to technological advancements, which were created as an outcome of both publicly and privately funded research all around the world that we are currently in a better state. 
I fully understand that and I fully agree with that. Only one side is arguing that it is all just magical free market principles. And just like only one side here is arguing that an entire nation is crippled because they decided to, to uh, adopt Marxist principles when plenty of other countries have so like are, are successful social democracies well, or at the very least have a robust economy and also more social spending where citizens well, are happy and they don't have to be living in fear that their that their bosses if they fire them they're on a whim that they'll, they'll die well, like, let, let's bring it back domestically then why is it the most murderous hopeless and poor cities in America all run by Democrats what? What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're bad. What do you want me to say? Okay, sure. Well, because if your very, your very bad, policies are put on trial in Philadelphia yeah. and Chicago yeah, you know, and Oakland like Rahm Emanuel, and Portland, the big socialist and Seattle, who and said Milwaukee. Chicago needed socialized medicine and that's why there's gun well, violence. Chicago's like, already, argument is Chicago's this? already entertaining universal basic income of yeah. which you support. Oh, they're, it, they're entertaining so, so you're saying they premeditatively right? are, are having a lot of violence because they're going to implement universal basic income? Well, they also have the strictest Please gun make laws a good in the argument. country, Please, but one you know, you're a big fan of those too. Please make a good argument one time. No, can you can't just say... Can you answer the question though? Why is it that the most murderous... Some of those Democrats are bad. What do you want me to say? maybe the the ideas are bad, Hassan, what? and maybe the ideas don't work. But what are the ideas? Like, do you the really? The ideas are but, high but tax, not big government, socialist Li principles. Limiting, That's limiting not government why freedom, not investing, not, not allowing on. Name one socialist freedom. principle that Rahm Emanuel has tried to implement. The strictest in Chicago, gun laws in why, the country. Which is Let's why, start with that. The fact that he doesn't allow school choice. The fact that he cracks down on the voucher system you, in Chicago. The fact that Chicago has the highest property taxes in the country. The fact that Chicago just instituted an income tax. These are all quote unquote progressive ideas. Chicago is more bankrupt. Are you against hopeless. all taxation? Can I just can we just get this out of the no, way? No, I think we should have lower taxes. And you, thanks to like Donald what, Trump, like we have what? the lowest but, but tax rate in 60 years. Give me a number, because like. I always, I always, I, I never understand this. It's always, it's always like, I love deregulation. I love yes. lowering taxes. Like, it, you, just making these declarative statements might sound great because the tangible impact of it is not necessarily immediate, especially when it comes to tax cuts. But we see the consequences 20 years, 30 years, 40 years down the line, like the erosion of the middle class in America. These are a consequence of Ronald Reagan era tax policies. This is crazy. All of our school, our schools are failing, Charlie. We have because four, of Democrat have, alliance. Oh come, yeah, Democrats like the, the ones cartel. in Oklahoma, right? That's where where so, many. So you support have school choice, Hassan? Days. By the way, Sweden has school choice. Yes, That's absolutely. Just, so Sweden yeah, has school That's choice. what I want. I don't want to desegregate the schools. I actually don't support school. Like we're so ridiculous. Dude. School choice is a, is a solution it. that can allow poor families to go to a better school. Oh. As Democrat politicians and teacher unions that it's are preventing like poor families from wall. sending their kids to better schools. I, I I'm I'm trying to come to a conclusion with you about obvious problems that we have. But you are literally just re you're just regurgitating Republican talking points back at me without necessarily listening to anything. Can you disprove anything I've said, Hassan? I say this is what's going on with our schools. Disprove it's one thing I've said. And you go, do you hate choice? What does that have to do with what I I'm saying? I asked a question, Hassan. I didn't say you hate choice. I said, are you for school choice? I said, do, do you, you hate choice? Do you school hate choice. choice. Do okay. You, do you hate school do you choice? Do you sure. support school choice? It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous question because you. No, it's actually already... Florida implemented school choice already... and went from 25th rank in education. No, I already said it. I the second I, ranked in education in the country. School choice works and it helps the least of these. You're doing it again. Which I know you're you literally like a politician, Wait, nonstop with you talking mean points. Saying and, facts. But I gave you facts the answer. bother you, Hassan? Does evidence bother like you? Wait, 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 wait. Does numbers wait, wait, wait. bother Everybody, you? No, 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 no. Hold on, Charlie. Charlie, let's get back to reality for just a brief moment, okay? Let's I am leave, using let's numbers. Let's leave the conservative sphere for a second and get back to reality. You make false assertions nonstop. Name like for example. The fact that democratic policies are the reason why Oklahoma's school system has failed when there's literally schools in certain districts, there's f schools for four days. Like, what are you talking about? It's a pol it's a consequence of underfunding uh, these school systems. And that is is inherently anti-socialist. If liberals are doing it, then they're also anti-socialist and therefore they are wrong as well. And that's something that I want to talk about here. Look, this is why I came in and said, right now, the biggest problem in our country for my perspective is the fact that we don't look at socialism as if it's something that could potentially help us, but because of years and years of propaganda, and also very, very talented mouthpieces like Charlie here, and I will admit, oh, thank he's very you. good uh, at, at disseminating conservative agitprop, okay? Because of that, and because of the, because of the lack of uh, supposedly inside of our liberal institutions, the lack of education surrounding Marxist theory only, uh, only at the highest levels, that people 
genuinely assume that socialism is a bad thing and not necessarily something that can help us, something that can save us. These are popular policies, you guys. You guys are advocating against your own, well, uh, your own best interests. You're advocating against your own well-being. When you talk about free market principles, you're essentially saying, look, it's fine if private companies can do whatever they want because private corporations are essentially privatizing tyranny, okay? They are unelectable, they are unaccountable, and this mythological free market understanding some hasn't Hassan, saved please. you at all. Use some evidence so then we can have a discussion about it. I mean, look around, dude. I already gave you I look around and I see a lot of okay. Trump supporters. Great. Go Trump. Okay. No, that's great. I mean, what, your example of evidence is the fact Hassan, that there are Trump supporters in the evidence. room at Politicon. Like, I used Very evidence. good. Okay, so for example, evidence. Chicago has not had a Republican mayor since 1931. Evidence. Atlanta has not had Stop a Republican mayor Stop looking at this from artisan perspectives. Years. I don't care about the Democratic well, okay, Party. But here's the point, is that your ideas have been put your in referendum. Your failure to see Hassan, that I'm not, finish. I also Hassan, don't I, like liberals I allowed you to get through your diatribe. Problem. Allow me so to finish. Actually, that's the perfect transition to the next topic here. So, hey, we have a moderator. So... Couple, couple things here. Ugh. First of all, I love these guys. I knew you were here. <laughs> First of all, this is one of the most entertaining conversations I've seen in a long time. Next year, we won't need a moderator. <laughs> Second of all, uh, you guys are very talented because you've touched on nearly all of the topics I wanted to touch on. Third, you've touched on actually what you ended on here is an interesting theme that actually cuts across the political divide. And that is that young people across the board are extremely skeptical of institutions. They are skeptical of both the Democratic and Republican parties. A plurality of millennials today identify as independent. So I want to get your take on this because I think it has a huge impact on the policy choices we decide. And I heard in, from both of you, you know, when you mentioned Democratic policies, Hassan would say that I'm not a Democrat and I do even criticize a lot of liberal policies and, and vice versa. So let me, uh, let me actually start with Hassan on this. For the record, just yes. before we even get started, I didn't say I'm not a Democrat. I said I criticize Democrats because yeah. I'm not a partisan hack, okay? If someone's, policy po if someone's policy choices, for example, like school voucher systems and whatnot, are inherently bad from a morality perspective, it, they, then I don't appreciate that, I'm going to criticize it. That's all I was saying. Right, but you're, you I don't, said have, to defend, I don't right. have to defend the Democratic Party, and I certainly will not defend the Republican Party. That's all I wanted to point out. I, I will still probably vote Democrat in the end of the day because I believe in easing the burden placed upon the proletariat, and that is why I will vote Democrat, and I'll tell people right. to do that as well. So, so, so let me let me let did me ask. Say, did he say the proletariat? I just are you sure are I you that. triggered by a a word? Like, what do you mean? So, okay, hit sign. Proletariat, <laughs> uh, an inherently bad word, guys. It means the working class. No, yeah, I, I got that. Just ask how that worked out in Stalinist Russia, you know, fighting for okay. the working class. Only right. place where there's ever been the proletariat. No one has yeah, always you know, ever like worked Yeah, you know, like Mao's anywhere. China or, you know, Vietnam or Cuba yeah. or Zimbabwe okay. or all the hundred other times we tried communism in the last hundred years. Bourgeoisie That's not what I'm advocating for. I don't, do you understand the difference between Stalinism and Leninism and, Mar like, and Marxist theory in general? There are different variations. What you're doing right now is taking advantage of a lack of education surrounding leftist ideology, and it's really disgusting. Instead, sit down and understand what the hell I'm talking about. I don't care about state assertion of power, okay? I don't care about authoritarianism. Obviously, I'm not an authoritarian. I don't like our current almost proto-fascist government right now. All right. Wow, okay. So, um, can I, can okay, I say, go ahead, so go ahead. Here, here's something, Hassan, just so the audience can distill this. Here's, I don't trust the government. Therefore, why make the government bigger? Hassan says make he doesn't the trust the government and he wants to make government bigger. He no. says, oh, the government is, this is Hassan. The government is largely bought Are by lobbyists. Are you literally doing a, this is Hassan right what, now? Do, can, you can sound, I, do you think you sound intelligent? Uh, can, can, I, can I summarize what you're saying? Okay, go we ahead. We agreed that lobbyists have too much access to this government. You want to make that government bigger, stronger, more powerful. I want to make that government smaller and more accountable to the yeah. citizens. That's a huge difference between conservatives and progressives. I love that, like, look, are we going to have an actual intelligent conversation you surrounding this? Because more government doesn't necessarily always mean more bad government. It's not like I'm advocating for corruption here. Actually, as a matter of fact, if you want to talk about corruption, let's talk about lobbying. Let's talk about lobbying. Let's talk about how money is speech, like how we fund politicians. Let's talk about the fact that politicians spend 70% of their time raising funds for their next campaign. I don't like that system. I advocate Hassan, against I agree it. With you, you. Do you, so, so you I don't go, want, I, I, you want to reform campaign finance laws and give me specific examples yeah, of how you want to do that. Because to. I don't think Foster Freeze, who's one to. of your donors, is going to be very happy yeah, and, when and he I'm, finds and out I'm, and you're I'm talking sure, out of turn. And I'm sure that, 
The Democrat teacher unions are going to be pretty upset when you start talking about putting caps on Citizens United. Myth number one, that somehow only Republicans and conservatives benefited from Citizens United. I don't care the Democrat what they think. Democrat labor it's unions me. are I'm the biggest right now. There are from plenty Citizens of libertarians United. who feel Hillary Clinton feel outspent Trump two to one. So don't give yeah. me the idea that somehow yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. only yeah, Republicans and only... Re yeah. Let me to finish. Hassan. You know me. Hassan, notoriously not anti-Hillary. You're right. Each other I want to hear your solutions about campaign finance. Yeah, yeah. Let me go back to something you said earlier. Okay, okay, but like, dude, you, right. you can't like, you can't paint, okay. you can't paint like Democrats do this, Republicans do this. Ask me what my position is, and I will gladly tell you. I will like, tell you I'm my position you that same on benefit. campaign finance reform. Yeah. Uh, no more dark money. Specifically, 24-hour reporting. Okay. Period, unlimited, unlimited contributions. Unlimited contributions? Yes. Are you out of your mind? Okay, so let me ask Are you a question. Are you out of your mind? Let me ask you a question. The Young Turks Network. Yeah. Would you say that it's more liberal or it's more conservative? It's absolutely more liberal, Okay, dude. so when you talk, you're influencing an election. You think it's Should the same? Should that be regulated? You think us? Because that could be considered political speech. No, 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 no. You think, you, you think. You see where that can get really you dangerous? You think that, hold on, let me, let me just understand your, your, your line of reasoning here. Do you really think that Pfizer spending like $500,000 on a, on a campaign so that we can make, so that we don't have to regulate uh, drug prices, that's the same as me, a person who very outspokenly criticizes both parties, uh, talking about it from a leftist perspective, with almost zero actual uh, representatives to support. That's the same to you? What an no, insane analogy. Okay, so what every speech analogy. has currency, okay? What an insane so analogy. You all have to be a little all bit speech more has rushing. some form of currency. You have to have a little Whether a celebrity endorses some... a politician or whether a, 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 a political action group endorses a candidate. So if, if your position. Yeah, that money, a let me finish. Allow me to finish. That money is speech, therefore, money represents value. All speech must therefore be, be regulated. That when Lady you're Gaga not, you're, you're endorses Hillary Clinton, you're trying to apply Clinton, flat logic to that. something that is Son, insane. Please, for, for the love of God, let me finish a sentence, it's okay? It's insane. I mean. So, so 24 hour reporting periods and no more dark money. I think allow transparency if, if Yeah, you give us two bones and then you take away everything if, with if a, a crazy corporation unlimited. wants to participate in an election, 24 hour reporting periods. Here's what you and I will agree. Why do lobbyists have so much power? Because government is so powerful. The, 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 the idea that somehow we can grow government and make government better as we grow it, there is zero evidence ever to suggest that decentralized government back to the states and back to mean? the people. We have too many oh, federal you bureaucracies can't, you can't, running no, 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 Hold on, hold on. Look, I'm, I'm asking you because I genuinely want to understand your perspective, okay? So you threw out a statement where you said there's zero evidence that, that more government is better. What, is that, what does that mean? Can you show me one time in the last 50 years when an American government program or agency grew? American and it government got, program agency? Yes, because we're talking yes, about we America. we live in a capitalist structure Can you give me one like piece of evidence where an American that, government program grew and it got more efficient and it did a better job at delivering uh, value to the citizens. One. Uh, Medicare is a pretty good Eighty one. billion dollars a year in documented Medicare waste. Wait, so 80 you think billion 11 million dollars people now being covered? You think the fact that 26... By the way, here's what? the thing. Wait, 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 we hold pay on, into on. Medicare and hold you get on. it later. Okay, so that so welfare, housing, urban development, so, who education. Who wants to cut social security, dude? Like we're having this conversation as though we don't live in the same reality. Who's always aching to cut social security? Who's always aching to give tax cuts to the wealthy and corporations? Who's always even aching after to grow have, government? Even Who's after always they aching had, to spend more money that you don't have? Who's high always profits? aching to reverse the Trump look, tax cuts? Look, listen. Right, so like, look here, here. No, 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 no. Hold on. Big, let me finish here, my point. The big philosophical yeah, difference is that we both don't trust government. Only one of us want to make that government smaller and more accountable to the No, citizens. dude. That's, that's me. Not true. He wants to give more money and more power to the very government that I'm we both don't trust. I'm the one who wants trust. to make the government accountable. You're the one who's, who benefits from the government being corrupt because then you can turn around and say, no, we don't need this government. We need it to be smaller so yes. that your wealthy benefactors can virtually, from virtually, in, enact feudalist policies upon the same people who are cheering right now for free market enterprise as though that is going to save them. It is insane to me that people still think that this current broken system that we live under, okay, where, where wages have remained stagnant for the past 50, 60 years, while productivity has increased, which is, by the way, that's wage exploitation, just for those of you who don't understand that concept, but uh, like we, we, that, that everything is totally fine. And then you turn around and you say the stock market's great. Okay, the stock right, market is great. Let's the stock talk about market, some more numbers. Who owns the he stock market? Me, I'll interrupt him. I'll, no. I'll let do some more Oh, numbers, yeah, because okay? I'm making a good point. You have to interrupt. Look, listen. So you, you the interrupted stock market, me at least the stock market, times the already. The stock so. market... They, they, look, Republicans love talking about the stock market. You mentioned it in your introduction. The stock market is doing well. Consumer confidence is up. Okay, dude. Well, 
the, the, the 84% of the stock market is owned by the top 10% of wealth. Like when the stock market is doing well, it's not doing well for you. It's just doing well for those guys. But you can be certain that when the stock market is not doing well, it won't be good for you. Right. Absolutely not. No, sir. Right, so because let's... everything is taken away from the workers. We talk about, we talk about uh, like people always come up to me and tell me, people always come up to me and tell me, hey, Hassan, why do you want to take away my earnings? And I tell them, I'm not trying to take away your earnings. I'm trying to make sure your bosses give back what is rightfully yours. These are your earnings. You work for them, okay? And it is very obvious that corporations are not magnanimously going to anytime soon give you back those wages. So we have to implement regulation. We have to implement certain policies. This could be UBI. I don't really like it that much, but this could potentially be taxes uh, on the wealthy and corporations. Like there are many different ways to do it. Or this could be regulating the wages in some way or allowing unions to exist in countries. I can't believe you're booing this can, man. Can I, can I, your your sorry, father I, has, has, has been, look, your parents sorry, I, have benefited from this. Right. Your parents okay. have right, benefited Charlie's, from Charlie's this. Charlie's gonna come okay. now. So, so first of all, if, if you want some more numbers, um, Hispanic median income is at $50,000 right now a year, which is the highest it's ever been in American history under President Donald Trump. Wages have gone up 3.8% in the last 18 months. Hispanic unemployment is the lowest it's ever been. Black unemployment In the last the what month? Been. Three months? Hassan, for the love of God, allow me to finish, okay? But you, you, no, but three actually, months, that's a ridiculous finish. point. That's a ridiculous reference point, Charlie. Okay, that's what? the point. The lowest I ever black unemployment rate. Years. Lowest I gave you a 60-year window, and you said the last rate. three lowest months have been Hispanic 3% better. Okay. 3.8% wage growth, $50,000 an annual median income for Hispanic family, which is the highest it's ever been in American history. 3.9 million people have gone off food stamps under this administration 18 months, which is something that everybody should applaud. I love the workforce. Cutting. We have more job openings than we have people to fill those jobs right yes. now. 3.7% yes, unemployment which rate, 4.2% GDP Thank rate. Thank you. With <laughs> Large... Average tax should, cut for which is why we should need $2,800 a country. year. Obviously, there's more jobs available than people taking them. But, so but we here, should bring here, in more here's immigrants, the, right? Here's the big philosophical difference and problem is that Hassan says, well, I don't want to take your worker earnings away. I want to go after your employer, essentially, to make sure. I don't have the right to tell anybody what to do with any of their money. That's the big difference, Hassan, is that you're trying to It's program. their money, Charlie. It's the workers' money. They are just taking no, away it's and not. accumulating the profits for themselves. I'm the, not, the, the, by the way, is, I'm not even saying abolish all profits. This is a distinctly Marxist argument, by the way. Just because it's Marxist doesn't mean it's a bad idea. Stop being an no. idiot, dude. God damn it. Like, oh, okay, so I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. So. It's so silly, no. like as if as if if we implement Hassan, socialized medicine, Hassan, we're going to eat rats it, like Venezuela. I didn't or that say it was bad. Marxist. I said it was Marxist, and now okay. I'm going to tell you why it's bad. Oh, okay. The problem with the Marxist Venezuela. argument is the incentive structure. In a free market system, incentives. Everybody is incentive to create value, get a job, or take a risk and employ people. Under a Marxist socialist system, yeah, you're incentivized to either run for political office, get as much power as you possibly can. To, ex to try to extract money away from people that don't have it. Here's like, what about cooperatives? It, like, I don't understand. There's multiple different ways to do this. do that like, voluntarily. Go do what no, the but, Amish but, but do. Go live understand. in northern New York. No, in dude. America, we have people that live in cooperatives today. Don't tell me how to live my uh, life. You can live your life however you want to. It's just, look. The big look, difference and distinction problem. is that, that it's impossible to live as a capitalist in a socialist country. You can live as a socialist in a capitalist country. It's impossible to have capitalism without socialism. You could never How's that? You could never implement capitalism without public roads, without the infrastructure necessary to bring private industry. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, okay. You can live so, in a socialist country. It won't be great so, if it's a fully socialist country. I don't think we've been able to figure that out yet. So I'm not even saying that a fully socialist country will be great. But you have never, ever so lived you in a tolls? fully capitalist country. You pay tolls? You pay tolls? So that's it? That they're, they're that's a financing? user fee. That's not socialism. Oh, that's if you use the highway, you pay for the oh, highway. You pay, okay. you pay a gas tax. Right. You pay a gas tax. So yeah. if you drive a car, you pay into the highway fund. Yeah, you're that's right. That's how it works, Hassan. You're right. Socialism, socialism is just is, what you want it to be is, and not what it actually your head is. You're right. Never mind. a program that will not benefit you to send the money to someone else that 
is, is in a different socioeconomic Dude, circumstance. Here's Free market thing. capitalism is the greatest wealth creating engine in human history. It's lifted more people out of poverty. And you are Dude, a beneficiary of the very it. system like, that you are bashing right no, now. No, because it's Your not life free market capitalism. It's so stupid. When it, the last time we had free market capitalism or something close to it was leading up to the Great Depression, okay? There's no such thing as like, we have a fully free market. Where is the fully free market? If you like a decentralized government, why don't you go live in Somalia? There's decentralized government there, all you want. Well, so we are more capitalists than we are socialists right now. Uh huh. And everywhere the free market. Oh, so you admit that capitalism and socialism coexist. So we have. Thank some, you for yeah. proving my earlier point. But Hassan, even though you were like, yes, we have some hor So, yes. We have broken public schools, which you would attribute to socialist policies. We no, spend money that I we don't have. We need to spend Government more is far on them. too big, far too powerful, far too controlling over our lives. Dude, we stop, have a four point four trillion dollar budget every so single weird. year. That, it's an idea, it, it's an we, ideology. You we have, like we have three million, million people that work for the federal government. All of these are pseudo socialist ideas of which I categorically disagree with. The, the, so you want to the, privatize the school system entirely? Okay, localize no, no, the school system, question. eliminate answer the Department question. of Education, don't, send the money back away. to the states, Do you want allow to a voucher the school system. system. Right. One at a time. What is pro what, by the way, what does Foster Freeze think about all that? I would like to know his perspective, because obviously so, his perspective I would love, is more important. So, if, if you're, so just, just so you use that note, no, he's trying to attack my investors and donors, of which I'm happy to talk about. We have 35,000 donors spanned in all 50 states. We now have a $15 million budget. And we are supported by some of the most successful people in the American business community. He means wealthy billionaires who have stolen jobs, your money and your wages. created wealth for everyone. Oh, really? So, so when we get investments from people that, for example, helped create the modern internet as we know it, or people that helped Oh, create, how was the modern uh, internet created? Oh, wait, that was also socialism. That well, was actually no, military okay, finance. So, let me ask so a question. So there you go. And another example so, so of me, how publicly so, so funded Hassan, research is good, so and we all benefit most, from it. The most successful Silicon Valley companies right now are all socialists. Is that what you're saying? Google, no, Apple, absolutely not. Facebook. Oh, okay. So did the most successful so Silicon Valley on companies invent the, the internet? technology sector. Come on. We rely That's not on what I said market. at all. That's not what I said at all. No, hold on. How about, about the internet, internet providers? You just said internet providers. No, I said ISPs need socialism so that there is an infrastructure set in place so that they can come of and which build they their... pay for every single year. Okay. So when exactly. They, That's the socialism. <laughs> Yes, but in order Jesus for them Christ. to operate, they have to pay into it. This is so silly. So we're, we're talking about two different definitions. No, we're not. I, there's one real definition that I'm trying to describe to you, and then there's another one where you're just like making up and picking and choosing whatever is capitalist because it benefits your talking point, and then claiming that Western the rest, civilization that's bad was created by free market of capitalism. More government. We're, we're, so, I'm trying to explain this concept to you, but you refuse to understand. But I don't think it's because you don't, you can't understand it. I think it's because you refuse to understand because it doesn't fit your narrative. You my narrative is about now. freedom. My narrative is no. that America is the greatest yes, country ever to exist, no and I want to expand freedom and opportunity for all people. My narrative there is, is no that freedom in a country. The, the narrative I care is no that we have global poverty at the all-time low. That is privatized tyranny, Charlie. There is no freedom in a country that is privatized tyranny, where your bosses can do whatever they want and never even give you an example, and never even give you I, a I, reason. I'm not arguing for what anything in the same galaxy is what you're describing first and foremost you just said i'm arguing for freedom i'm telling you that like yes. progress so, so, is important so let's progress walk through. towards a capitalist liberty system needs to happen. that means you have private property rights which mean if somebody is exploiting you you go to a judge and you adjudicate that differences okay. that is inherent in a free market system you're arguing some sort of is that the only thing that abstract anarcho what happens, anarcho when capitalism? Fails? what happens when there are natural barriers of entry and the government obviously has to step in and subsidize what happens like we have socialism so, like affirmative country, action policies the, we only have socialism for the wealthy, and we have some socialism for the very poor. Okay. What we so, need to do is bring that back and have socialism for everyone. For example, Medicare for all would be a good place to start. Okay. So you... There is no answer you can give me to what will happen when automation wipes out the labor force with artificial intelligence. Socialism, whether you like it or not, some variation of that already exists in our country, but some variation of the that that will make you deeply uncomfortable will inevitably happen. So it's really silly. You can yell about the free market and how great it is, and also the free market's great because my dad is wealthy is not an argument that you can make anymore, okay? There are people that are suffering in this country. So, so, Hassan, why don't you give 95% of your money away and go live on a commune? Do you really think that that's how it works? Do you really think that that's not? how it works? Go, this go is live silly. what you preach. Because I, every single this is as You silly. talked uninterrupted for five this minutes. Is... Hassan, let me Okay, finish. go ahead. Sorry, you're right. You're right. I live you're right. what I practice. Make your, make I'm a free market capitalist. Uh, I employ people. I took a risk. I have my own startup business. Every single day, I practice what I preach. He wants other people to contribute to what he considers to be a good idea, what he considers will make the world a better place. You okay. have the freedom to go live as a socialist. 
ridiculous. Go do it, Hassan. What's stopping you? Okay. All right. So and here's we'll why to, this is ridiculous. And, we'll and the, the last point. The last point I will make is this. Okay. Here's why that conversation is absolutely preposterous. If I gave away the measly earnings that I had and gave, gave away 95% of How that, much do you make, that wouldn't son? necessarily even push the needle. I will be very honest. It's really embarrassing, especially because my boss is sitting right there. I make, I make $60,000 a year, okay? And that's a really good salary, but it's not like what Ted Cruz's wife was talking about the other day when, he said, when she said $174,000 salary a year. It's not like we're gonna buy a second home anytime soon, but that's besides the point, okay? You're trying to attack me, which is ridiculous, like uh, asking me what my salary is. Sure, I'll reveal but it willingly. You, you brought but it listen, up in context. I'm asking, no, 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 why don't no, you live on, like a socialist? On, on. Okay. Go the live like a socialist. The point is larger. The point is larger than that, Charlie. I live like a capitalist every single day, hey, Chank. I live as a capitalist, hey, 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 okay? Hey, hey, hey. I live what I uh, believe. No, no, no. What do I do? I get charity every single year. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's Charlie, my salary? Hold on. Charlie, less than on, it. Charlie, hold on, hold on. take a seat. Come on, Chank, let's go. Charlie, take, what are you doing? Sit down. Take a seat, take a seat. Psycho? All right, no, no, take a seat. You're going to take a seat. You're gonna take a seat over oh here. Oh my God! What's my salary? All right. Oh, uh, ridiculous! So, All right, behave, everyone. Jesus okay. Christ! Okay. I practice what hey, I hey, preach. Hey, Charlie, Charlie. You, Stop! Stop! You do not practice Charlie. what you Stop. preach. Stop! Charlie. 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 All right, hold Remember? on. Last point. Last point. Last point. You don't want to give him the attention here. Everyone, thirty-five thousand donors quiet across quiet the country. Last point. Last point. We are funded by the grassroots of this country. You can try to demagogue it all you want. <laughs> okay. Can I finish my point? All right. Less than Charlie. Hassan's. You hold can on, check hold it yourself. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. All right. Right? We're having a, we're having a reasonable discussion, right? We're, we're here. We're talking to one another. Let's stop screaming at one another, uh, including those of the Young Turks who obviously don't pay me enough. So, um, <laughs> so here's what I was trying to say, OK? We like to make ourselves feel comfortable by like implementing certain environmental policies. For example, like the straw ban in California, which is largely ridiculous because it lowers 0.006% of the plastic in the ocean. This is just simply to make ourselves feel comfortable when a hundred companies are responsible for 71% of the, of the carbon emissions. Like it's ridiculous to think that we are going to have any sort of positive change if I go out and I live in a, in a, in a, in a upstate New York like collective. Obviously I'm fighting so that everyone can at least see that I'm coming at this not from a partisan place, not from a partisan place at all, but from a place where I'm looking at our, our problems in this country and trying to find solutions that will help every single American. Okay, perfect. So we have to wrap it up now, but I want to say a couple of things. First of all, I'm really grateful to both of you. What we're seeing right here is, is except for that last part, is, yeah. is American democracy at work. This is about a competition of ideas. And since the founding of this country, this is really what it was all about. What's the role of government and what's the role of free enterprise? And so I just want to thank both of you for having a constructive and lively debate. Give both of them a big round of applause. God bless America. Thank you. And God bless Donald Trump.